In this problem, we are looking at a very academic example uh, to try to see what the continuity equation tells us and does not tell us about the flow. What we have is a fluid flow with three components, u, v, and w, and we are given u and v, and we are looking for w according to what the continuity equation or the mass balance equation tells us when the flow is incompressible. Uh, this is a completely academic fluid flow. There is no fluid flow, no real fluid flow that would look like this. Um, and even if it did, we wouldn't know because um, fluid flow measurement campaigns or fluid flow simulations using computers uh, typically produce um, arrays of uh, pixelized data um, and never we're never able to plot functions based on this. Um, so this is very academic and you should not focus on the meaning of those equations. Uh, it doesn't have any. What instead we're looking at is the mathematical nature uh, and structure of the physical laws that we're applying. So let's see what the mass balance equation tells us about W and this flow. The mass balance equation in incompressible flow tells us that the divergent of velocity is equal to zero. The divergent is an operator. It doesn't mean itself anything by itself. And the velocity field here is a whole field of vectors. And everywhere um, in space, the divergent of velocity has to be zero. So this is not a vector. This is a, um, a field of scalar values that are all equal to zero. Divergent of velocity is a very funky way of writing uh, something that's perhaps more easily understandable if you split it out. And this is the change with respect to x of the x component of velocity plus the change with respect to y of the y component of velocity plus the change with respect to z of the z component of velocity. Note again, this is a scalar. It's a sum of three values. And this is done everywhere in space, yes? Uh, so it's not a three component vector field. It is really just a number, a scalar field, like so. Okay, in this equation here, we see that we have some term for w uh, appearing. And what we want to do is to isolate this w here as a function of all the rest and try to figure out what we can say about w in this velocity field here. So let's do that. Let's let's work it out. We're going to say <coughs> sorry. We're going to say uh, that the partial derivative of w with respect to z is equal to 0 minus the other two. So that's minus partial u over partial x minus partial v over let me rewrite this v partial, mm -hmm. let me grab, grab the pen correctly, partial v, partial v over partial y, uh, like so. And what we're going to do is to introduce in this, instead of this u here and v, the components that we have above. So we have minus the partial derivative with respect to x of this whole expression over here, which is just, I'm disciplined, I'm just going to copy it over, 2x squared minus y squared plus z and then here I have minus the partial derivative with respect to y of uh, 3xy plus 3yz why not plus z like this okay so let's carry this out um, this is not a very difficult derivation so we have um, the partial derivative with respect to x of this whole function here is just going to be 2x. So this is going to be minus 2x like this. And then over there, the partial derivative with respect to y of this whole expression is going to be 3x and then 3z here. So that's going to be here, 3x plus 3z. So if you group this together, it turns out it's uh, sums up as minus 5x plus, no, uh, minus 3z, like so. Yes. And this is the partial derivative of w with respect to z. This is kind of cool, but we are not really looking for the partial derivative of w. We are looking for w. And so what do we do when we have a derivative and we want the primitive? We have to integrate. And so what we want to do is now is integrate this function. And so we write w. w, when I integrate this with respect to z, 
look what I'm going to have. I'm going to have minus 5xz minus 3 times 1 half of z squared plus, and this is very important, so let me write it big here, plus, plus what? Well, usually when we do an integration, we have an integration constant, which is there. But this time, we didn't do quite the usual integration. We did an integration based here on a partial derivative, which means w may be a function of many different things. Um, it may be a function of z, but it's also a function of x, y, and time. Um, and so we don't know what those functions are. Um, and so instead of just an integration constant at the end over here, I'm going to write... Um, a function and it's an unknown function which I'm going to call f like this and this function is a function of all the rest that we didn't have in this derivative here so there's going to be here a function of x y and t here and look look what happens if I try different things let me let me pretend here uh, that this function was uh, 5 this thing here uh, that this was 5x plus 6 million uh, times y cube uh, plus 3 times the time. When you take the derivative of this whole expression here, like so, you will still land. You take the derivative of this with respect to z, you will still land on this very same expression here. So this is a very dangerous thing, is that we don't, we don't know at all uh, what this function f is. And the continuity equation gives us no way out of this problem. So it gives us no hint as to what this function is. Clearly, this is a very stupid uh, guess. Um, you cannot have, I mean, if, if the velocity in z increases very strongly with y, um, with a huge factor that's much larger than x and t, then it would be a good question to answer. Uh, what pushes this flow? What accelerates this flow? Uh, what is the physical cause of this huge acceleration? Um, and the answer is we don't know. Uh, to answer this question, we would need an equation that looks at the momentum of the flow. Um, so we would need to write something that says the change of velocity of the flow uh, can only be due to certain forces. And this is, of course, the Navier-Stokes equation. But this is a story for another uh, chapter and another example. Um, in this problem here, the only thing we can tell about w is this. Let me try to have straight lines. Is that w is this function of z, but then has unknown components of x, y, and t. Um, and this is extremely frustrating about the continuity equation. The continuity equation does not allow you to predict the velocities. Um, it only allows you to predict how wrong you are. Um, you give it three velocities and you um, take the derivative of each velocity with one uh, with respect to one dimension. You add up those three numbers uh, and that hopefully should be zero. Um, but this is all it tells you. Uh, it doesn't tell you how to get to any of those components completely. Uh, it just gives you hints as, uh, as to what it is. Um, and so this is a major frustration for a fluid dynamicist that the continuity equation is not enough to predict what's going to happen to flows. Anyway, this is how you calculate the third component of a three-component velocity field uh, based on the incompressible continuity equation. Here you go.